What a mess. You're not wrong. It's a mess on my desk and it's an absolute mess in my head. I've spent the last two weeks trying to solve the PS RAM, uh, I don't know what you call it, issue, challenge, task, mystery. It's definitely a mystery on initially my tiny Pico and then on any Pico using the Pico kit reference board from Espressive. It's a version 4 board. On a Room 32, we'll go into what that is in a moment. I have just been smacking my head against a brick wall day after day after day. And boy have I learnt a lot and got to do some pretty crazy things that I normally wouldn't have done, like learn how to build MicroPython from the command line, learn how to build projects from the Espressive IDF directly from the command line. I haven't touched the Arduino IDE at all for any of this. But where do I start? Is it working? No. <laughs> Is it close? Yes. But it's been close for a few days now. But it's still not working. Let's start off with this little sucker. So that's my Rev4 and my initial attempt at a pinout on the back. Now, bottom line is, the pinout is wrong. There are a couple of pins that I need, or at least one pin I need, that isn't exposed from the Pico, that I just can't get to with these pads on the side, not easily. Not without damaging a board, and then I'll, I'm never going to know what the problem is with it. So my attempts at obviously just sticking PS RAM on the back didn't work, and my attempts at rewiring didn't work. But I have found a combination of wiring now that is supposed to work. Now, why all this trouble? Well, as I've mentioned a few times, PS RAM is not supported officially on the Pico D4 yet, which means there's no information out there on how to wire it up and even, you know, the, the code in the IDF. For those of you that don't know, the IDF is the basically the SDK for the ESP32 that comes from Espressif, they've fallen it an IDF. The code inside that even detects the Pico and then early exits and says, sorry, there's no RAM, PS RAM support, no external RAM support for the tiny Pico. But it should work for the Room 32. So we'll go into that adventure in a moment. So I've been trying to work out the pinouts myself, just like a few other people have been trying to work out the pinouts. There are two current people working on this problem slash project that I know about. And one of them, his name is Rudy, and he, I think, I believe has got something working on a Pico. He's got some RAM working, not this RAM, different RAM. And then the other person is Boris, who is actually the guy that has got a, a special fork of MicroPython that supports PS RAM on at least a Room 32. But MicroPython's still built on the same IDF, although he's using an older version of the IDF. And so he hasn't tested it on the Pico D4 because he doesn't have a board that has the pins broken out. So this has been a, an absolute drama, disaster. There's a whole forum thread on the Espressives forum going that I've been contributing a lot to, that a lot of other people have been contributing to, trying to nut this out. So the first biggest problem is there's only one board I've got, Pico board, that I can even try this on, and that is the Pico kit. And that's because it's the only board that has all of the pins broken out. And some of the pins we need are ones that are over here. There are the last three on each side, which aren't normally soldered onto the board with pin headers. I mean, there are headers there, but there are no pins. So I've had to put some pin headers in. And then it uses some other pins over here, 9 and 10. Every other Pico board I've got doesn't have all the pins I need broken out. That one doesn't. That one doesn't. So I couldn't test on those. So the only one I can test on is this, which is what this rig over here was designed to do. As you can see, it's got female headers and the Pico plugs in and there's my PS RAM and we'll go into the problems with that in a moment. The problem with using this is that the pins that they've named at the back here are totally different naming to the pins in the data sheet. Not only that, but there are pins in the data sheet that have these names, but some of them aren't the same. So trying to work out what pins are supposed to be the correct pins from the data sheet to run PS RAM, and then trying to match those pins to the Pico kit board has been an absolute nightmare. It's meant that I've constantly had rewiring, rewiring, rewiring. Like to start with, I didn't know what the correct pins were. So trying to find the pins and then map them every single time I was trying to make a change, 
It was just a nightmare, but I eventually found a set of pins that actually detected the PSRAM. The problem is, it detects it, but it fails the memory test. But it only fails on 33%, or th between 33 and 38, because it's different every time, percent of the read-writes that it does. The rest of them it passes. Which sounds to me like a timing issue, and it could potentially be a timing issue, because look at the length of the wires I'm using. But what's interesting is, if I use the Pico kit on this board, and it doesn't have these long wires, right, the Pico kit sits directly into the pin headers, so it's only got these length wires, I get a, about a 30% fail rate on my read-write tests. But if I get this Room 32 connected up, which uses a completely different set of pins, mind you, but at least these are documented, although they're documented for the, uh, the Rover, and I had to find the equivalent for the Room 32. When I connect this up and run the same code, this also detects the PSRAM, but it only fails on between 3 and 5% of the read-write tests. So if it is a signal issue, if it's a wire length issue, a capacitance resistance issue, then this should be worse than this, because this has got wire lengths that are three times as long as this does. But this actually has more failed read-writes than this does. And that does not make any sense. And that is driving me nuts. And I've tried all types of different versions. So you can see here both of these have got a 100 nanofarad cap on the VCC line, and they've got a 10K pull-up that is required on the CE or CS line, the chip select line. But I get similar results with these, right? I get detected but failed. Of course, I can't use this at all because the pins aren't exposed, so I can't get it that close to the middle. <laughs> Not that it's close, it's definitely closer than this is. So where does that leave me? Well, I'm a bit perplexed. I'm at the point now where I believe it's an incompatibility with the RAM. If this was performing worse than this, but they both detected, then I could put it down to signal strength. Or, I shouldn't say strength, signal speed, um, matching lengths of wires. Now, the RAM's running at 40 megahertz, so it's a pretty fast signal. Not the fastest, it's not like it's DDR4, but it's still pretty fast for SPI. So, length should be a factor. The good thing for me with the Tiny Pico is, if you excuse the mess, is that although I've got varying length signal traces on the Tiny Pico because of how small and compact everything is and just the routing, the longest one is only 10 millimeters anyway, which is a tiny fraction of the length of all of this. So I have some disparity with my trace lengths. They're not matching, but at this speed and that the actual lengths that they are, that shouldn't be a problem. But I can't verify that until I make a Revision 5 board. And I've got a Revision 5 board ready to go, and it's been ready to go for over a week. It's got a lot of other changes to it, which I really want to try, like lower um, sleep mode power and all sorts of stuff. But I didn't want to build them and try them until I was 100% convinced that I had my pinout correct. Because if I don't have my pinout correct, and I can't get the RAM working because I have a pinout issue, I need to go make a whole other revision. So where does that leave me? What have I done? Well... The first thing I've done is I've ordered some more RAM, a different type of RAM. It's coming from Electro Dragon. I have paid an absolute premium for shipping to try to get it here by next week. And my plan is to mount some more RAM on some of these little breakout boards because it's the same size RAM. It's a, a SOP 8, 150mm. So I should be able to put a little RAM module on here, the new one, pull this one out, put the new one in, and test it straight away. And I should be able to at least test it like for like on both the Pico kit and ESP32. And if I can get it working on both, what it also means is I can add PSRAM to my ESP32 dev board if I do something with that in the future. So that's one avenue I'm taking. By the way, I've tried two different batches of this LionTech RAM. It's both the same RAM, but two different batches from two different places. They might have all come from LCSC, I'm not sure. I know mine did, but I got some RAM from someone else who happened to have some, and I don't know where they obtained it from, but it's the same model RAM, and it has this, exactly the same problem. 
So I have to believe that it's incompatibility with the RAM just due to the results I'm getting here. It's just really been a struggle. I've uh, been trying to keep some good humor through it all. But, you know, every day I, I start with fresh eyes and, you know, I look through the forum posts that have come back overnight and there's some people there trying to help me, which is great, and I'm trying to help them because we're all trying to work out together what the different pinouts are. But just every day, it's just I, I end the day completely demoralized and just completely clueless as to where to move next. And until I get this new batch of RAM and I can rule out this RAM as being faulty or just incompatible, it's not faulty, I think it's just incompatible, then I, I don't know where I can go to next. I was thinking of making another version now with this RAM, trying to get the traces as short as possible. So get a new proto board, get Pico on, Pico kit on, and try to actually mount the RAM inside on the back of the, of the board and try to eliminate a lot of this length here. But I don't believe it's going to fix it. I don't believe I'm going to get 100% pass rate by doing that, simply because this is performing better than this is. I don't believe it's a software problem necessarily, although as I mentioned the IDF that I'm using is a much later version than the one that the MicroPython builds with, but they both have exactly the same results when I build. If I run MicroPython on here and do a RAM test, I get the same result as if I use the latest IDF. What's great about the latest IDF is it supports bigger RAM modules. These are 64 megabit, as you can see here, 64 megabits. Um, where the one from MicroPython right now only supports, I believe, up to eight, or I think it's only up to four, or with bank switching, it can do eight. But the latest IDF does support up to 64. It's got 32 and 64, and that just means I can address more memory, which is awesome if I can get it working, which so far I can't. One more spanner in the works, which we discovered last night, was that there are different revision Pico kit boards, and every revision has different labeling for their pinouts. And even some of the documentation for the Pico kit is wrong, which uh, Rudy has found out, and he's got the documentation team to fix that. But he has a revision four board. So if you look here, it's P32 Pico kit underscore V4. And I have a V4 board, yet his labeling on his top silk is different to mine. So the labeling on top here doesn't match the labeling of the pinouts of the Pico D4 in the data sheet. I need to go back and forwards all the time trying to work out what my pinouts are. I've just got versions written everywhere to try to work it all out. It's become a complete mess. So that is my PS RAM drama. It has been such a frustrating journey. And when I say frustrating, only because I want to move on. I want to get revision 5 of the Tiny Pico done and out. I want to know whether PS RAM is going to work or not because I want to either remove PS RAM from revision 5 and ship revision 5, or I want to get it working and ship revision 5 with PS RAM. What I have right now is it recognizing the PS RAM but failing RAM tests. Like I'm stuck right in the middle. Super frustrating. I know this has been a little bit of a rant. That's okay. I'm surprised it's been this calm, maybe because it's the morning still and I haven't buried my head in trying to resolder and rewire things. As I said, there's been some positive spin on this. I've managed to work out and learn how to work at the command line level. I've learned a little bit more there than I really ever wanted to learn. But it's all knowledge, it's all skill, which is good. I'm not afraid of the whole, you know, how do I build this outside of the Arduino IDE type scenario anymore. And my soldering skills have had a, a complete and utter workout. But right now, there's still no resolution. And I'm out of time to get any Revision 5 boards built and sent back to me in time before I leave to go to Shenzhen. Which means it's going to be at least three weeks before I get to build a Revision 5 and try some RAM on it. So though next week, I should have the new RAM and I should be able to test this scenario with the new RAM. And fingers crossed, it's just going to work. And if it works, then I know that it's just this RAM that's the problem, and I'll shift to the different RAM. Unfortunately, it's a little bit more expensive, but not much I can do about it. But it's going to be a long, slow process now, because, as I said, even if I sent these boards off to get manufactured today, they're not going to be back in time for me before I leave on the 9th. And what I might actually do is send them off to get manufactured and have them delivered to my hotel. 
so I can actually bring them back from China and have them with me and not have to pay DHL. I'll have to speak to JLC PCB and find out if they're prepared to do that. What I actually might do is then order up a whole bunch of stuff and take it all back with me and not have to pay any shipping, which will be nice. But there we go. Tiny Pico PS RAM. It's not even Tiny Pico PS RAM. It's just PS RAM in general. Getting it working with the Room 32 and getting it working with just the Pico D4. It has been a complete slap in the face. But I'm not giving up. I'm going to either completely solve it and ship it or I'm going to completely rule it out and move on. But I don't know when that's going to happen. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like if you like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. If you're a new sub, welcome. It's great to have you here. Thank you to all of my patrons. I will catch you all on my live stream on Wednesday. Bye.